Hey Zalevers, this is Super Zomaga Barbecue, and I'm giving the people what they want. I've been asked ever since Goliath tier came out whether I could do a best and worst of the tier. So here it is, best and worst of Goliath tier. And we're going to look at every single card for the first time in these best of videos. We're going to look at every single card, and we're going to show who is the best and who is the worst. So... Buckle up, because this is the first time we've done this. In the previous videos, we've done top 10s, bottom 10s, top 5s, bottom 5s. We've never done every single card. So if you like this format, smack the like button. And obviously, I've done it a little bit quicker than usual. We've got this out literally as the tier started. We've only been out a week, and we've got every single card listed down. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more W2K19, Supercard Mayhem, and everything else that comes with it. And turn your notifications on so you don't miss a single video. But let's get right into the best and worst. And we're going to start off with the ladies first. Now for this one, we're going to start with the bottom three cover, the midsection. And then we're going to go into the top three for the ladies. There's some of these who are joint positions. For example, you'll have Shayna Baszler and Natalia. Just happen to have the same stats in this tier. But we're going to start at the bottom. And work our way up to the top. Here comes the bottom three. Now the third from worst card in this tier. Now just to clarify. Before we go through this. Because I just said worst. Technically every card is good. It's just some are better than others. And for example. Liv Morgan is actually a really useful card. She's a left arrow. There's not many left arrows in this tier. So she actually can be very very useful. For example, cards like Billy Kane, for example, Sarah Logan. Maybe not so much because there's other cards that are better than them. But if you've got a pro of that card, then honestly, you're not going to have much to worry about. Liv Morgan starts off as the third worst card in this tier. Which isn't surprising because since she's been with the Riot Squad, she's not really done anything. Well, good theme music though. That's not bad. She was actually my freebie, so this kind of hurts saying that. Billy K is then the second worst card in the females for Goliath tier. And again, not totally surprising, although I would have personally put Ruby Riot there. Because again, they've kind of done nothing and put Peyton Rice with Billy K on the same stats. Given they're the Iconics and basically the same person. Sarah Logan, unfortunately, she kind of doesn't really have a personality. <laughs> Um, I feel really bad saying that because Sarah Logan and the Riot Squad could be so much better, but they're used horribly. And as such, Sarah Logan does end up at the bottom of this list. But as we make our way through from the bottom for Sarah Logan, go past Liv Morgan, we have Ruby Riot. They're moving up to Peyton Rice, Bailey, and here we have the first tied stats. Becky Lynch and Ember Moon. Surprised that Bailey's so low. But not surprising that Becky Lynch is just above her because, you know, they're pretty good. Ember Moon also getting some, a little bit of a push on Raw. She didn't win the money in the bank, but she got a little bit of a push on Raw. Moving up to Sasha Banks after this. Uh, nice to see Sasha not so low down this tier. Mid, pretty much sitting in the middle, which then leads us on to Natalia and Shayna Baszler, who pretty much are the standard bearer for this tier, like the, the way you want to be if you're kind of average. Shayna Baszler getting a boost because she is the NXT Women's Champion and a dominant champion at that. Alexa Bliss, former Raw Women's Champion, then comes in for Goliath tier and number five. And Carmella, the current SmackDown Women's Champion, makes a massive jump where in WrestleMania 34, she was the worst female in the tier to fourth best. I know, I'm just as shocked as you are. But now onto the top three. So we're going to start off with a bit of woo, and that is Charlotte Flair, third place in the tier. Not surprising given she has been, in fact, the champion up until Carmella dethroned her and she still looks strong to this date. She looks incredibly strong in the Money in the Bank match as well. She's had a very, 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 very good match with Becky Lynch recently and she's still seen by many as a standard bearer of where you want to be as a female in WWE. Asuka then comes in at number two, winning streak aside, and jobbing to Carmella with James Ellsworth on the side, Asuka's been pretty good, and she's second in the list. Which then moves on to Nia Jax, who is by far the best female in the tier. She is the top of the top, the number one 
by a considerable distance. The Royal Women's Champion, dominant, although I would say one of the Rousey would probably be knocking on that door if she was in this tier, but she's not, and she's one of the only notable names missing on this list, other than Paige, for example. You know, could have had Nikki and Brie Bella. There's plenty of names missing, but Nia Jax takes the crown as the queen of the female division in Goliath tier. So let me know your thoughts on that in the comment section below. Is there anyone who should have been in there who's not in there? What are your thoughts on the rankings, uh, the top, the bottom? Let us know. And also let us know for the males as well. Talking about the males, we now move on to the men. And we're going to talk about the bottom half of the table first. And whilst it was kind of obvious who had the best stats in the women's, Alexa Bliss being best in speed, Nia Jax power, etc, etc. Let's get into the bottom 10 superstars in Goliath tier from the males. And we start off with a triple threat tie between Pandango, Shelton Benjamin, and Elias. Which I am very surprised that Elias is at this low. But we move down to Aiden English, which isn't really surprising because Aiden English really hasn't done anything wrestling wise. But it's nice to see him not at the bottom of the leaderboard as the Ty Dillinger comes in just below him at the eighth worst best. Then on to Drew Gulak. Not really surprising because Supercard don't really feature a lot of 205 Live guys. And it wouldn't surprise me much if Drew Gulak. Ended up being one of the lower rated guys in the new W2K19 game, even if he deserves so much better. Moving down, and this is a shock because you're going to see this, why it's a shock in a second. Because you're probably thinking to yourself, well, this isn't much of a shock. The man who looks like a bald version of Freddie Mercury himself, Scott Dawson comes in at number five. And you'll see why this is a shock very soon. Cassius Ono and Rhino Cassius already been uh, added as a one of the event cards. It was the event undercard for um, Heroic and Rhino. Probably going to be the undercard for Ring Domination as well. Making their way in at number four. Lince Dorado and Tony Nese tie both 205 Live competitors. Not really surprising at number three. And then we have a duo of TM61 from NXT who have literally made their return within the last couple of months. Shane Fawn and Nick Miller riding in at number two and number one of the worst cards in the tier. And again, to mention, these are based on stats alone and not based on opinion. But as we look over that list, you've got some surprising names. I personally would have thought Elias should have been higher up. Sean Benjamin as well. Uh, Drew Gulak is definitely one. And based on his tag team partner's rank, I would have thought Scott Dawson would have been up here. The ranking of this tier is very surprising. Going above the top 10, you got Tyler Breeze, Big Cass, Ty Dean Ambrose, Baron Corbin, Dolph Ziggler and Rowan, who are, ta who are they're tied. Bobby Roode, Cedric Alexander tying as well. Rusev, very surprising he's so low. Bobby Roode, I'm not surprised by. Cedric Alexander, I would have boosted up personally. Same with Rowan, given Harper is quite a way up this list. Moving on to Reza, uh, I missed Akam and Titus O'Neil there, sorry, who would they tie and then Reza's afterwards. Kalisto gets a nice boost, even though, again, I don't understand why. Heath Slater, again, I'm not sure why he's so high up. Alistair Black, Bray Wyatt, Sami Zayn, tying at the next point. And then we move on to some tag teams. Form of Raw, tag team champions Cesaro and Sheamus tying with Luke Harper. Which again makes no sense as to why Harper's up here and Rowan's down there. Grand Metalik, I, I, again, I, I don't get it. Grand Metalik is way higher than Lince Dorado, which makes no sense. I would have personally taken Grand Metalik out and put in him down where Cedric Alexander is. That's just my opinion. Apollo Crews, again, a, a, a relative jobber on Raw. Part of Titus Worldwide, hasn't really won any big matches, but he's still only one place below Drew McIntyre, who is a big, big player on Monday Night Raw now. Big E comes in afterwards. The placement is crazy. Victor, part of the Ascension, who have been the joke tag team on SmackDown on the Fashion Files with Fandango and Breeze. And I don't understand. I think... And I'm going to make a very big guess here, and that is that there were certain superstars that were supposed to be on this, and for some reason, 
they weren't able to get the rights to the images, so they had to fill them with other superstars. That's just the way it comes across, because the placement in these tiers for these stats is all wrong. Kofi Kingston then comes in after Victor. Matt Hardy and Xavier Woods tied, and then Connor comes in. And you're telling me that Connor is as good as Batista? No way. Batista then comes is the next. Batista, Drax, whatever you want to call him, Dave Batista, movie Hollywood superstar, as well as ex WWE superstar, sure. Fire Hall of Famer comes in just after Connor, which is just mental. Then we have a three person tie Jeff Hardy, Kevin Owens, and The Miz, which is just awesome. I'll oh, stop. Bobby Lashley, who has in now been in the team event, and Randy Orton tie for that 13th place. Shinsuke Nakamura, I'm surprised he is that low down. And the same goes for Samoa Joe, especially. With one or two of the names that are in the top 10, which we're going to talk about now. Top 10 time, and this is where it gets interesting. So, coming in at number 10, it's always him, it's Finn Balor. I'm not surprised Finn Balor's up there. I personally would have had him maybe top 6, top 7. They seem to be having him and Seth very high in the tiers, which is good. Daniel Bryan. I'm gonna go out there and say this. If we're taking this based on Daniel Bryan, the wrestler... He should be way higher. If we're talking about Daniel Bryan, the returning wrestler, then he should be lower. He should be probably top 15, top 20. I know that that's very controversial, but he's not really done anything massive since coming back, other than his WrestleMania match. But uh, moving on from there, Braun Strowman, again, guys should be way up there. He's an absolute demon. Well, he's not actually, he's a monster in the ring. Seth Rollins. Uh, uh, making his, you know, Intercontinental Champion, he's going to have Champion's Advantage, uh, which it pays a lot into the latter part of the tier. Triple H above Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins hasn't beaten Triple H. So why, why is that happening? I don't know. Number five, though. Number five. Oh, number five. Uh, this one is just great. This is what happens when you type in numbers and you don't really pay attention to the list. Number five, Dash Wilder. See, I personally thought that this would have been Kurt Angle, a Hall of Famer maybe, someone who is a legend in the industry, someone who is one of the best of the best. Dash Wilder. Oh, they did tell us, they're top guys. You've got Dash Wilder, who's fifth best in the tier, and you've got Scott Dawson, who's fifth worst in the tier. What, what even is that? Brock Lesnar then comes in number four, not, you know, not expected that he's he's number four. I personally thought he'd be one of the best, as in number one or number two. But um, given he never freaking shows up for work, I'm not surprised. Roman Reigns comes in number three, not surprising. Yawn, he's the best. Uh, yeah, let's just get on with it. Uh, no Jinder Mahal on this list, actually. Very surprising. I thought Jinder would have been in this. The Rock comes in at number two. Roman Reigns is so-called cousin with inverted commas and then we go to number one number one is very well deserved and absolutely kills most of the rest of the tier he frees that so many people it's ridiculous a j styles this guy is just something else best card in the tier by country mile i'm very happy to say i have one of these but it's good top one in the tier best speed yeah, talk about best stats, AJ Styles obviously being best speed, best charisma belongs to The Rock, best toughness belongs to Braun Strowman, and the best power belongs to, yep, that guy, Brock Lesnar. But that is it, that's the top 10, bottom 10, AJ Styles, the best in the tier, not surprising, much more dominant, much more, well at least he's actually turned up for work every day, uh, Reign as WWE Champion. If he beats CM Punk's record, I will actually appreciate and acknowledge it. Whereas Brock Lesnar can do one. Uh, honestly, I, I'm very happy with the top 10 apart from Dash Wilder. Uh, but there could have been a couple of things that moved around. Maybe Daniel Bryan, I would think, be moved down. Or if you were going to base it off his, you know, yes man gimmick, then he's got to be at the top. Just simple as that. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel by pressing the big red button. You like this video if you liked what you saw and you like the format, the new format, and turn your notifications on so you don't miss a single video when it comes up. But until next time, I've been Super Zomago Barbecue. You guys have all been awesome. And one last thing, 
And that is two. So leave! I am a man at war, and now you're fighting for all of the broken people, all of the people thrown overboard. They always try to shame us, but they don't speak the language. No, we're not nameless, we're not faceless, we were born.